I don't need a hammer. <laughs> can, uh, can be your I got my fists. Yeah. I have you, my be your own hammer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everyone to another Bad Hammer, where we decide whether cards stay in card jail. With me, you guys know them, Leonie and Adam are pro Yu-Gi-Oh content creators. <laughs> for those of you that are watching it for the first time, what we do, there's cards, they're banned in Yu-Gi-Oh. They were either so powerful or unfun that they were just disallowed or restricted. We check together to see if maybe it's time to change things. And today, we are doing, I'll try to gauge your reactions here, Spell Book of Judgment. Okay, so, so, so very hard, Matt. Well, I, I hope the discussion will be a little bit more intense than this before we get into it. Just if you guys are watching for the first time and that little sub button is grayed out uh, or red, please make it gray or gray, make it red. I'm not sure. YouTube changes all the time. Make but it gray. If you, if, you, <laughs> if you sub is the main way that you encourage Card Market to support this YouTube channel. Uh, but let's get into it. Mm -hmm. Let's do Spellbook of Judgment. Spellbook of Judgment is a spell card. During the end phase of the turn, this card was activated. Add Spellbook spell cards from your deck to your hand, except Spellbook of Judgment. Up to the number of spell cards activated after this card resolution. Then, you can special summon from your deck one spellcaster type monster whose level is less than or equal to the number of cards added to your hand by this effect. You can only activate one Spellbook of Judgment per turn. Now, quick notes about this card. Uh, it's limited in the TCG, but it's also limited in the OCG. You yeah. could have made that in one line. <laughs> uh, the card Separate is... them out, gotta keep them in a different format. The card is based on the tarot card Judgment, uh, the 20th of the Major Arcana. You can see Empress of Prophecy and Hierophant of Prophecy and Reaper of Prophecy in the card's artwork. And it depicts Empress of Prophecy and Hierophant of Prophecy attempting to purify the soul and save Fool of Prophecy after he was corrupted by the Spellbook of the Master and subsequently transformed into Reaper of Prophecy. Yeah, uh, the, the whole spellbook archetype is based around the like major arcana of the tarot cards. So like you have like the Hierophant and the Judgment, uh, Justice, uh, the world. Yeah, the world. Right. A bunch of other kind of things. It's a really neat archetype. There's a bunch of like, like lore behind it. The fool gets corrupted. Ha! Ah, that's like iconic, isn't it? Yeah. I see that it's it's limited. Yeah. So uh, is it still played? It was banned until very recently. Until very recently, this card was banned. Uh, then in the October. October ban list of this year, 2022, for those watching in the future, it was uh, put to limited. So that was an interesting kind of change that they made. Leonie, mm -hmm. you play the OCG, so you'll be able to answer this. Why was it banned and then limited? Actually, I wish I could tell you in, in detail, but um, well, in general, the whole like spell book archetype, there's a lot of spell books that you can get from this card. And I feel like it was just like, enabling too much. Well, luckily, we have a man with details. <laughs> so, the man who knows. Um, so from my understanding, to give a little context, Spellbook was a very powerful archetype in 2013. It actually was the only deck that could put up a decent enough fight against a deck called Dragon Rulers, which we will eventually get to on this channel. I have been reading the comments, don't worry, we will talk about the Dragon Rulers at some point. Um, and it was the only deck that could actually pull up against it because it was exceptionally powerful. Because what you could do is play a bunch of spells after this card resolves. It doesn't matter, so you can add spell books up to the amount that you've activated. You don't have to add the exact amount that you've activated, right? And this isn't as good as like say something like drawing 10 cards if you play 10 spells, but you can add a severe amount of cards from your deck to your hand and thinning it out. But not only is that a really good like resource generation tool uh, that doesn't really kind of go negative at all because you're playing spell books and then you're recycling the spell books uh, using the spell books themselves and then you can draw those spell books again and a bunch of tools uh, for spellcaster decks. Um, I know this sounds like a dumb question, uh, but Yu-Gi-Oh has a hand size restriction. It says up to, but it doesn't say a limit. So when I can I add as many like 15 cards as to my hand if I want, or do I have to discard down because of the hand size? You discard at the end phase of your turn. So you would have to do that if you activate this on your turn, but it has a little lightning bolt symbol beside the uh, spell card uh, dip signifier, meaning that you can activate this on your opponent's turn if it's set, meaning if you have a bunch of other quick play spells, you can use it to add cards to your hand and you won't have to discard for the uh, so then you can use one turn. This feels a little disgusting. Is this as disgusting as it feels? Yeah, it is. Because you can, like, let's say you start, you put on, like, let's say you have three books or something, you put them down and you find a way to activate them, which are mostly, they're quite disruptive. Um, so, okay, so yeah, the resource generation from this card is nice. But 
The main reason it was kind of disgusting and got limited was probably due to the fact that A, you got the resource generation, but two, you got to special summon out a monster that happened to be a spellcaster uh, that had a level up to the amount of spellbooks you added. Uh, you could special summon out a floodgate monster with this called Jaugen the Spiritualist, where you could discard a card from your hand to destroy all special summon monsters in the field, and then it had a floodgate lock that stopped both players from special summoning as well. So what you could do is you could use your Spellbook of Judgment to get Jaugen out and then use it to stop your opponent from special summoning, which is a core mechanic of the game, while also maintaining a bunch of resources in your hands that you can use to kind of stop your opponent's plays. So it's a very powerful resource generation tool, but also a floodgate enabler. Yeah, so it's, it's not that it's just like ending the game, it's just preventing your opponent from yeah. doing stuff while putting yourself way ahead yeah, yeah, of yeah, resources. Yeah, yeah. All right, um, so now, can one of you tell me what would happen if it was just unbanned, no longer limited? People would actually play spell spellbook decks, and uh, they're really pretty. <laughs> they're really. <laughs> they're the, actually. Yu-Gi-Oh really would become a prettier it game. It would be very aesthetically pleasing to have like a spellbook board. Not gonna lie, like these magicians, they're like so mystical, and also the tarot thing is just like um, would have a pretty board. I'm not sure if. Yeah, it would become like relevant, meta relevant too much, but like, yeah. Uh, if it was unbanned, see, okay, so it's at one now and Spellbook has seen zero play. And the reason it's seen zero play is that while summoning out Jaugen the Spiritualist, uh, back in the day was really powerful uh, because it, it, most of the time you couldn't negate it or kind of stop it in any kind of way, meaningful way anyway. Um, now there's so many ways to get around it, it doesn't really matter. Like, you could just beat over Jaugen. It's it, this end board of you can't special summon anymore and uh, I have a bunch of spell books in my hand isn't really that powerful anymore. How long ago did they ban this card? They banned it, I think, in 2014. I could be off by a year or so. Okay, so it, it has been a while. There's been it's, new cards Yeah, it's been since. eight years roughly since they, they kind of said no more playing with this, I think. I could be wrong. Uh, flame me in the comments if I am. Very specifically, this card got limited uh, in the last ban list while there was already a better spellbook deck out there or a better spell deck out oh. there called uh, Runic, which does kind of the same thing where you use a bunch of spells to generate more resources for yourself, but you also thin out your opponent's deck by exiling or banishing cards from the top of their deck, depending on which spell you activate, while also kind of being able to enable floodgates. And that deck is, is way better at recurring things. Uh, and you also draw cards instead of adding spellbook cards, meaning you can draw cards that aren't necessarily part of the archetype, but may help you with your further plays. It, it just got pair crept by a better spell deck, so. I really get the impression that Konami was just like, well, this card's bad. Let's put it to limited first, test the waters, see how it goes and then maybe we'll see if we can unban it. I know you want to say something, but I feel like we have a question that we need to answer. So what happens if a Sonic Duck shows up at your house, leaves a letter on your door, you open it, oh, you're hired by Konami. Now you can make all the decisions. You go for your first day at Konami. You make two friends. One of them studies really hard. The other one's Ginger. You eat a chocolate frog. <laughs> and then after you're finally within the halls of Konami, you decide whether this card should be, say limited, banned or unbanned. What decision would you make? Meh, I'm banned. I don't think it does anything right now. Yeah, maybe, maybe to, to just see what happens, and I, I, I'm assuming nothing will happen. So then. Yeah, the, the safe, uh, <laughs> the safe limit. Sonic Duck, by the way. Sorry, can I just point out that that is a Yu-Gi-Oh card? I know. Yeah, it's oh, the okay. only yeah, one yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, I was just taught you just pulled that out of nowhere. All right, so it seems <laughs> that the verdict is unban it. I don't have my hammer, so I'm just gonna high five myself, and it's gonna make a noise. Bing bang. Okay, so you heard it here first. You could unban it. It would probably not do a big deal. You could leave. Even leave it on as many as even leave it on as many as you want in your deck. I don't know. I'm not a Yu-Gi-Oh player. Let's not get into that. Do we have any parting notes? Just that I'd like to bring that point home again. That it's just one of the prettiest designs out there. Um, I'll thank you guys for your wealth of information, um, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>